I'd totally fuck a reptilian. Oh, I love an abortion spa. Alien murder sex. Alien murder sex. I always want to go for the back. I'm just like Welcome a back. back person. Welcome back. Yes, it's us again. It's us. <laughs> we had uh, we had Ryan Joseph on last week, and he's a peach. I love him, and he is. And just be be like, ready for the war in the comment section that is happening <laughs> right now on Instagram. If you want to go, Edge Lord Gold. Edge Lord Gold. The best troll. If you want to go participate in the war that's happening over us saying retard and tranny, you can go to Alien Murder S E G S at Alien Murder Segs on uh, on Instagram and have fun with the free speech wars. Have fun with that. I didn't even know there was a free speech There's war a free going speech on. War. There are so many wars happening right now that I was blissfully unaware of I'm the free speech. Only concerned war. about because I'm like that. Con- eh, I'm they- just gonna casually be like. Eh, just don't like training. Listen, Congress has said that there are aliens, and that's the only war that I'm concerned about. Same Z's. So anyway, they just <laughs> launched another SpaceX mission. They did. They did. Oh well, I mean, they're in cahoots with like the secret government. Absolutely, and I do think we need to do an episode on that. So put a pin in it. We'll put a pin in that. And today we have a very special guest. A we very, got a guest. A very sweet, good friend of mine. Uh, Christine Levine, she doesn't, I mean, she's been on The Inbookables with Doug Stanhope. She's an incredible comedy genius. I'm just going to say that in her own right. Um, when I started comedy in the Pacific Northwest, I idolized this woman. I idolized your sets. I fucking was so excited that you like came to drink with me and that you Aww. gave me like good constructive criticism when I was in my first year. You know, that was really meaningful Aww. to me. Yeah. I love it. I didn't know I was meeting family tonight. Kind of. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, kind of. Oh, Lauren, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. What a great uh, introduction. And you were just so special. You were so raw and honest. That was very um, unusual at the time. You know what I mean? It was like a time where like, I came on the scene and I was kind of like doing the same thing. So I saw a lot of myself in you. And I was so um, just in love with that. I just thought, oh, my God, I just wanted to, like, hug you and, like, you know, <sighs> blow you, really, you know, just so that I could get you to grow. And I've I've grown. <laughs> like a little flame. That's how yes, we get things to great. grow. I'm we so blow them. You. Thank you. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be, but you know what? That's okay. And, you know, the journey. This is where we at. The journey is different for everybody. And I'm not palatable like all those cute little 24-year-olds in skirts doing stand-up right now. Yeah, so, yeah it's a different game. You know game. what? I, I was never going to be that either. In fact, I called up uh, I called up Stanhope's manager one time because I was very pissed off that a comic we know got on Conan or something like that. And um, I didn't think this person was very funny. And at least not as funny as I am. You know, yeah. so I was real pissed off about it. And I called him up and I go, Brian, blah, blah, I on Conan, blah, blah. And I was all pissed off and I go, I got to get on Conan. You got to get me on Conan. And he goes, he's a Scottish guy. And he goes, Christine, you're never going to get on Conan. Why? Why? And he goes, look at you. Just be honest. Like, look at the type of comedy you do. Look at where you're coming from. Like, that's just not you. You have a different path. You have a different audience. You have just a different direction. You're, you are never going to be on Conan O'Brien. Just get it out of your goddamn head right now. Even for the things that you have already said in the past, yeah. you cannot be on Conan O'Brien. You're done. <laughs> I'll never do in late night. <laughs> we have hours yeah. of this show to incriminate me saying terrible, terrible things and trolling. Oh, I've just done myself yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, I have a pedophile so, joke right same now. Same with it's, me. Yeah, but your pedophile joke same with me. is like the best pedophile joke of all time. In fact, I should there's I have a line in mind that I kept. I felt like I was copying you, so I took it out because it, you don't, don't worry can, about it. Don't no no, no don't don't about even kids think about that kind eating of stuff, stuff with stuff, me, honey. Like yeah. oh, it's so good. Yeah, don't worry they, about that. Yeah, her her 
If anybody no. wants to, if anybody's going to narc me off to like, going to say, or narc you off and be like, oh, Lawrence, did, she's biting off your joke. I'll tell them to go fuck themselves and tell them I told you to do it. God damn That it. would piss me off so bad. That would, that would make me so mad if somebody told, <laughs> like, to, was ratting you out to me, like <laughs> you. Oh, girl. Stop. No. But everybody should no, know. That would really make me mad. Your joke about fat kids when you're like, you think my, like a pedophile moved in next door. Do you think my kids <gasps> are going to yeah. suck you, his dick. I love that joke. They don't even eat broccoli. Like that's oh so, my so, god! So yeah, that's, yeah, that's her. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. I yeah, I'm, and I'm, I had like I had parents come up to me after shows and go like, "How can you talk about your kids like that?" I'm like, "You dumb bitch! They helped me write these jokes. They're smarter <laughs> than I am. They're in they're on smart it. Smart because they're fat. Yeah, <laughs> they know how it works. Yeah." This is how it works. Eat cake. Don't get it. That They're thing. nerds. They they got all of it. Yeah. So I did your podcast recently, and uh, your podcast you is did. called. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. What was yours oh, called again? My uh, found dead with Christine Levine. Found, found dead. dead. Everywhere you listen to podcasts, it's available. Um, and I talked about my time at the morgue. I saw lots of lots of dead. Um, but Christine, what is your uh, your first? What was your big story? You worked at a porn store. Right? And you found a dead body. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I'm even wearing my porn clerk porn. brand porn shirt. Porn clerk. It says, it says porn clerk. Yeah. Anyway. But, yeah, I, I worked at a porn store for about 14 years um, in Portland. I worked at Fantasy for Adults Only. And sometimes people would die in the porn store. Now, this wasn't my first dead body. <laughs> and it casually. wasn't my last dead body. It just happens. It was just a... Yeah, it does. You know, people die everywhere. People will die. You'll see at the grocery store. Well, you know, Lauren, they just drop dead everywhere. Yeah, I had to go pick so, them up. <laughs> right. Yeah, you get it. So yeah, so people would die at the porn store, and usually, you know, I would miss them. And I got, I'm gonna be honest, I got kind of jealous that like I could never catch one. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like Pokemon. I could never catch a body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poke it like with Pokemon. a dildo, like. <laughs> Yeah, because the clerks that caught the bodies, they would always get like a certain amount of attention or they got a certain amount of like cred, you know, or whatever. Death energy glow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you got the body. Oh, my God. I was around death energy. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And what happened? Yeah, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. There is an element of that. Yeah, absolutely. It's the ultimate gossip. Yeah. It is some hot goss because then, and then the guy, the person you're gossiping about, um, can't say shit back. Like, can't say you're making it up. Yeah. So it's they, really the best. They were so <laughs> fat. I needed to, like an extra. They were a four person job, and they can't say anything. <laughs> and yeah. Four people. And they can't be like, I was not that bad. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Yeah. I burned a lot oh, of God. calories on my Fitbit carrying you. Yeah. <laughs> do you have right. your Fitbit data from working in the? Uh... I do. <gasps> We could go I look at it. I would love to look at those, uh, <laughs> those numbers, those of analytics. That. We should do it sometime. We totally should. Okay. We have a whole list oh of God. things we need to like. Yeah, but we are done. very organized. But so, go on. <laughs> so organized. <laughs> no, I bet Lauren got like muscles working in that job. Oh, corpse fit. For sure. Corpse yeah. fit. <laughs> corpse fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's it's right. a weird version corpse of CrossFit. Fit. Like sweating, the cops mm-hmm. are waiting on me, and I'm like, I got it, <laughs> but I got it. You could help, <laughs> yeah. <It's> disgusting, <laughs> bro, bro. Oh, gross. It's dripping. Yeah, come lift? to think of it, do you lift decomp? All of the <laughs> decomp. <laughs> straight out of decomp. decomp. Straight out of decomp. <laughs> <laughs> Gross! <laughs> like, oh yeah, all the crime scene clean, oh. cleanup guys I've ever met are very fit. Actually, they work out. Yeah, you sweat in those suits. So is this how I get the like super stocky like stud girl body? Is I just go work for the morgue? To be honest, most of the morgue techs I worked with were pretty fat. I could stand to oh, put on were. some weight. Well, let's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, you know people that eat a lot of fast food. We'll just put it like that. I just want there to be like a morgue training video that does the whole 
<laughs> oh, hey, I dun, didn't dun, see dun, you dun, there. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes a big fatty dies on the fifth floor. And sometimes Don't worry. you've got a step count to meet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go, go on, Christy. What happened? <laughs> what happened? We were just sidetracked you. What? So oh, you... no. Oh, you mean the dead, the dead guy? The oh, yeah. yeah. So this was like not my first body it was like my first body at the porn store was not my first body ever in the world ever yeah. no i found a, i'm one of those people that have found multiple dead bodies <laughs> and i don't like it's not like i go hiking i don't jog i don't <laughs> i just but i have somehow organically like been the um uh, this angela your, lansbury you know this is your yeah secret. i just stumble on them this is your x-men power this is your this basically, is your, yeah. Your mutant power. So You're some kind of necromancer. We should like, take you. I have the ability to find the dead. We should take you around New York. Yeah. We should go to New Orleans together and just find. Dead no, people. we're gonna find so many bodies, and it's the hot season right now. You gotta so wait till the winter up. for that. No, no, they all come up in the summer. <laughs> it's called. Oh, yeah, you can smell them. It's literally called decomp summer at the morgue. <laughs> it's literally. It's a decomp yeah. summer. <laughs> Oh, you See that you that. died you on your that. own. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> My parents are proud. Uh, awesome. <laughs> My mom has Alzheimer's. Who gives a shit? <laughs> yes, please. The first body. <laughs> oh yeah. So I get this body. At the, so what happens is, um, the my coworker Josh and I were drinking. Um, we were, you know, we drank on the job frequently. But I did tell Josh, I remember telling him that night, you know, like one night something's going to go sideways when we're drunk and we're, we're going to wish we weren't drinking. We cannot keep doing this. We have got to like, at some point, stop drinking on the job. And he was like, yeah, you're right. But you know, not Never tonight. Mind. Not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> yeah. But it was a good point. And then this guy comes up to the counter and he, um, he was like, he's a cruiser type guy, you know, like one of, he's just a real, you know, kind of a, a femme guy. And he was in a mesh uh, shirt and little black hot pants. And he's like, I knock on the door on uh, booth 26 and he didn't answer. So I don't know, something fussy. I don't know. Maybe, you know, he was like kind of like very near shimmy, you know, guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He was like a little Euro trash guy. And um, I don't know if that accent was real. That's why I have totally comfortable doing it because I think it was a put on. I think he would just did it to get, you know, be like, Lame. oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm One so of those exotic. dudes. Kind of a, yeah, he's like a hustler dude. Yeah. So I don't feel bad like if I'm doing it because uh, that is what he sounded like. And what kind of, you know, what country is that shit from? It's from it's not a relaxed gay, gay, gay Sylvania. Like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. it's Pakistan. Just, yeah, I don't know. Yes, that's what I mean. I think he, I swear to God, I don't think he was like, I mean, I don't think he was from Real. anywhere. He just, he just used it as He's like a way to get boys. Iowa. <laughs> Yeah, it's from Iowa. probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> or just tigered, you know, or Oregon. <laughs> anyway. Beaverton. Yeah, exactly. So I, um, I was like, okay, you know, I don't know. I had like a little nickname for him, like, um, like Homo Jose or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, all right, whatever, go away, and um, we'll deal with it. And then go away, Jose. Josh. Yeah, Josh. He goes over and he tries to open the door, and he go he comes back and he's like, Christine, something's wrong. Like that guy really isn't in booth twenty six. He's really not um, answering the door. And I go. Oh. All right, fine. You know, I do this all the time. It's always some junkie. No offense, Lauren, but, but hey, you know, it's always some. It's cool. It's been a while. <laughs> With our past, our drug past. It's, it's been, been a long time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're over it. We're fine. We're fine. Passing out so, in boots anyway, is so, so behind us. That's right. It is. That, I don't do it anymore. She doesn't do We don't do it anymore. And we're good. Neither, yeah. No, we all used to do it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. So it is usually, but it usually was just somebody who had done so, too much heroin or got drunk, passed out, did too many poppers, you know what I mean? And just made it a little time and a little baby, a shaker, like a knuckle in the sternum, you know what I mean? One of those yeah. type jobbies. And so I've been there, done that, no problem. So I take the keys, I go in and I swear to God, I open the door just a crack and I could just see his shoulder just a little bit. And it just, 
you know, when someone's dead, that stillness is just, it's like, it's like you're looking at a rock. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's nothing there. He, I just could, saw his shoulder and I knew, and I be honest, I got a little, yeah, I got a little excited because <laughs> I was just like, Sean, I got one, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little stoked about it. You know, there's a there. And the reason I can say this with such a glee, I guess, is because there are two sides to me. There's a side of me that's human. And then there's a side of me that's a comic. I keep trying to explain. You know what I mean? All my exes that think I'm a psychopath. I I keep trying to explain that. Like, funny is funny. Like, yeah. I mean, I this guy I dated before my husband, like he passed, he had jaundice, but I couldn't really tell because the light, we didn't have windows in the apartment and he was passed <laughs> out <laughs> and he'd hit me and I, I saw him passed out on the ground and I was like, do I call an ambulance or do I just leave him there? And I had to really like think about that. I actually had to call Jonas and ask him what I should do. <laughs> Did Jonas say just leave him there? I feel like Jonas would have been the struggle too. He would have been like, like, he said, call the ambulance, Lauren. I was like, okay. God, he's such a good guy. I know. It's almost unattractive. He's too sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you, Jonas. Love you, Jonas. (laughs) He's real nice. I I'm not sure I would have given you that advice. I probably would have told you to leave him. Just walk away. Leave him there. Walk away. And yeah, his family got mad because I left him at the hospital. His family was like, you left him at the hospital. And I was like, I, I could have not taken him to the hospital. <laughs> you were lucky. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dumbass. Well, anyway, so the guy, the guy's dead. Um, I knew it immediately. I got a little excited about it. Um, but then I was like, oh, you know, hold on. Don't be a bitch yet. You know, calm down, Christine. He's dead. You know, just let's look. Let's have a little look-see. I open the door wider to make sure, and he is dead. He's dead from the, like, he's dead, dead, uh, but he's, like, naked from the waist down, and he's, like, got his eyes open, his mouth gaping open. He's, mm-hmm. like, you know, and he's got his hand so close to his wiener, just so And there's no rigor mortis so yet. So close. But he's getting sticky, right? You know, like, that stickiness that they get? Yeah, the tacky. Yeah. Yeah, he's, get, yeah. Getting... he's starting to get the stick modeled or whatever just a little bit down by his butt you know yeah he is starting to get a little pale mm-hmm. on top i guess anyway the, um yeah 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 he was he was dead he hadn't been dead for very long it turns out probably only about 20 30 minutes i think from the last time because i i checked like what he, his last transaction was because my coworker josh was like didn't he just buy something and i was like oh yeah so i go through all the transactions and i found what he had purchased so we missed him by about 30 minutes. Was and it a heart, heart attack just from jerking it too hard? It turns the the coroner said he suspected a stroke. So what happens is if you are doing poppers and you have taken Viagra, one increases your blood pressure and the other lowers it. And that increases your risk of stroke. We have like a kazoo, kazoo little, sound effect. <laughs> like a slide. Yeah, yeah. that little seesaw. <laughs> Yeah, that seesaw action will cause a stroke. So that's what the coroner thought probably he died of. Anyway, um, so I, I'm i like, he's dead. Okay, so then I sh- shut the door. I lock it. Senor, what's his ass? Gay guy was like, oh, what's going on? Is he okay? And I go, um, no. Yeah, he's <laughs> fine. Oh, he, he, goes, he goes, oh, my goodness, he's sleeping? And I said, yeah, he's sleeping. We're just going to let him, you know, sleep a little bit longer. Okay. So shh. And he goes, oh, no, I say nothing. It's okay. No problem. Okay. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> so I go up to the counter. I go back to Josh. Josh is like, hey, how's that guy? And I go, he's, well, he's doing better than we were doing, Josh. He's dead. <laughs> like, he got out somehow. <laughs> like, we're still here. <laughs> so he's like, what? Really? He's dead? Yeah, he's dead. It's so weird, huh? And then I, um, and then I and then I go. I call nine one one. Well, no, I call. I call. I didn't call nine one. I I called nine non emergency. I thought at first I was going to call nine one one, but then What's I remember the being, you know what I mean, like nine one. Go nowhere. Yeah, exactly. And then I was like, oh wait, I don't have an emergency, so I hung up. Non emergency, but then it just went to like somebody who just goes, do you need fire medical or what? Like, what are you calling for? And I go, oh yeah, I don't really need any of that stuff. I don't really. I said, let me just tell you what's going on, and then you tell me what I need, because I don't really know. 
Yeah. And she's like, okay, what is it? And I said, well, um, I, I, I'm Christine Levine and I work at fantasy for adults only, um, on Southwest Coronado drive. And, um, we have a, a human body in the Jack shack and it like, can you, can somebody come get it? I guess I didn't know really what to say. It was just like, there's just a dead person in the store. And I was just wondering if you can help me get it out. You know what I mean? Like there's a, a meat sack stop pumping air and I need someone. There's that a clean up on aisle. Yeah. Yeah. That, we I need that booth. Booth. We clear that booth. Up. Yeah. We get that booth has money. It could be making. Come on now. That's yeah. right. My, my janitors are not here tonight. I don't know where to put it. I just didn't know what to really say about it. And then she was just kind of indignant. I don't know if she thought I was fucking with her. I thought she was fucking with me because she asked me, she goes, I'm sorry. Well, how do you know he's dead? Oh, God. And I was like, what kind of fucking question? What do you mean? How do I know he's dead? I I, I was just so, I was like, I don't know. I go, well, well, because I I tickled him and he didn't laugh. Like, what do you want? I thought that she was like, I was just like, yeah. His dick is hanging out. I thought she was joking with me. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, well, I tickled him and he didn't laugh. And she was like, that's not what I mean. I mean, did you even attempt CPR? And I go, listen, lady, him. there's a reason you work behind a desk. I work behind a desk. Nobody's going to fuck it. I, don't, I said, I just told you I work at the porn store. And she goes, well, how are you even able to um, diagnose him as deceased? Are you a doctor? And I said, again, I just told you I work at the porn store. Why would a doctor <laughs> work at a porn store? <laughs> This should be a, like a bit. cartoon. I was just like, I want that to be a hospital show now. You? Yeah, like, this should be like an episode of Scrubs. Sexy doctors working at a porn store. <laughs> I prescribe you. I got to pay off my medical debt. Of gang bangs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is a porno. <laughs> doctor yeah. porn store. <laughs> doctor. Doctor gang bang. <laughs> doctor porn store. I love it. Um, that's that's intense. But they that's did. Funny. She finally did send somebody out. She finally. She it's just like you had to fight. Why don't I just send somebody out? I was like, yeah. Why don't? Well, why I mean, don't just, you? You dumb bitch. Send me somebody above both of our pay grades, <laughs> please. Well, nobody yes, at the morgue is above exactly. porn clerk. Let me tell you this: the porn size clerk, of the doctors, porn. nobody, no morgue tech is above porn clerk. We're basically glorified waitresses at the morgue. You're just like, what the doctor say to do? All right. Okay. I took the baby's brain out. Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. All right. Like, it's just like, nobody I'll has any. Back in. No one has degrees. <laughs> no one knows what they're, everyone's just following, you know, it's like being a fucking glorified body waitress. You're yeah. a meat waitress. It is a body weight. You're really right. That yeah. is what I got that impression from you too, but I didn't put that together till just now. You're totally right. It's yeah, a body it weight. Because you're just like. Hello, did you did you Hello. order this liver? Yeah. Here you go. What um, would you here's like? Body for you. How yeah. many ounces of brain do you need? This. What evening? would you like me to weigh this as? What would you? Yeah. Would you left lung first, right mm-hmm. lung first? How do you want it? And then there's all this kitchen equipment. There's cutting boards and ladles for scooping out blood. And then there's like kitchen knives. And you're like washing dishes between bodies. <laughs> and I'm like, I've done this before. I wow. worked in a line cook. All we need is a grill back here. <laughs> we got an operation. <laughs> And many times I would find like fresh calf liver at, and meat, at actual meat in the porn, in the Jack Shack, in the back booths, like where that guy died. In those booths, they would put, I don't know, this guy had like a meat fetish or something. And he, he would, would like, like rub it a, on his cock, like rubbing raw meat yeah, on his he, cock. He would, oh, yeah. almost, maybe it feels yeah, like yeah, the yeah. vaginal Loved tube. The, the, I could imagine like a pork loin with the butcher twine, mm. like. The inside, in, like it probably feels like some. Our our mouths are just pussies with teeth. You know, like the tissue's the same. Wait, your pussy doesn't mm-hmm. have teeth? No, mine doesn't have teeth, Adrian. <laughs> so, like our pussy. I had mine pulled. I had all mine pulled out. <laughs> my, my I hear you can do removed. that. <laughs> now, do you wish you could get no. pussy veneers and go back at any point? <laughs> no. I'm I would good. like some pussy I'm dentures, old, I think. You know pussy I mean? dentures? Pussy dentures. Can we do that on the OnlyFans? Just put like dentures, dentures. in our pussies and take pictures? <laughs> so the, the material. You know there's a guy that, there's some freak that loves that though. This is yeah. the same as a vagina on the inside of your mouth. So I'm assuming with like meat, yeah. you could make meat feel like the inside of your mouth, then it would feel like a pussy. 
Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. There's some guy who figured out that if he wrapped a, uh, like a calf liver, you know, a cow, a liver uh, tight enough, and then he could use it like a jerk off with it. And it probably felt more natural than one of those. Um, yeah, flesh, uh, flashlights. The, yeah, flashlight things or whatever, you know, and he just, you know, and it has comes with blood. So it, maybe it's like period sex and it's already lubed Ooh. up and everything. And I he just loved it. I, I respect. Have, I respect it. That. The ingenuity. That, you and know? it's like so Mad Max. Like, and, and you He's know, thinking. And the apocalypse, there'll be like a, a, a store on the sidewalk of like the apocalypse, like trail where people are selling like livers just to jerk off into, you know, here's your fucking, yeah, wad, your yeah. wad liver. Your, yeah. I don't know what they'd call them. There's gotta be a, tra- yeah, not I mean, to eat. Yeah. Not to eat. These are to jerk off into. Don't. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm gonna right. write These are some solid livers. like fan fiction about the local butcher now. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh have God. you ever have you ever found a body, Adrian? I have not found a body, but when I first moved to New York, I lived in um I lived in dorms. Uh, I attended the American Musical and Dramatics Academy. <laughs> mm. It's a little fucking acting kids or whatever. Uh, so I lived up on um. Uh, 70th Street in the Stafford Arms and it was like we shared it it was kind of a halfway house like post medical building there were a lot of old people that Ah. still lived there you know you had shuffles and blue eyes and Muhammad lived next door to me his name was Muhammad he introduced himself to me he made sure to do it when I was in a towel so uh, but you smelled death at some point yes there were days you would come off the elevator and be like god damn all right, so we gotta rehearse Shakespeare we're gonna be down in the studio later and fuck we got another one (laughs) Or we'd be like out just having a cigarette and here comes the gurney and you're like, ah, uh, what floor was it? <laughs> it's just a part of life when you live so crammed in in New York, you know, people just die and it's just normal. It's right. Just, and then they're going to mm-hmm. clean it up real nice and another student is going to get a dorm. Some four person unit having a huge fight right now just got salvation because Man, somebody died and I, now somebody's going to get a private <clears throat> bathroom. I went into houses picking up dead people in Chelsea and it was this beautiful uh, one bedroom studio. It was gorgeous. I had a fireplace and we were carrying the woman out and um, pe- the landlord was there and I said, how much is this rent? As, I'm, <laughs> as I was picking the body out. <laughs> is it rent like, control? I was like, what is the rent here? This is amazing. Is hot water included? <laughs> yeah, I know it's up now so oh, was, oh just left the magazine subscription oh yeah what? i've been here the whole time <laughs> and like i mean <laughs> it was too expensive for me but like i a lot of times we'd pick bodies up and i'd be like this is an amazing place and i know that it's available now <laughs> yeah so that's just life it's just of life of course um will you take a percentage well, off like the when rent I found if i the... clean up the decomp yeah right what decomp don't because you would have done that because you're you had experience doing that. I, I know, actually yeah. stole money out of that guy's wallet. Yay! Um, that's your tip. That's your that cleanup a, tip. Yeah, your finder's that's what fee. I thought. I, I, <laughs> that's exactly what I think. I believe that. Well, the reason because, like all the other clerks, when they would find dead bodies, they always took clean out the wallet. So I had it in my head, kind of like that's what you do. Like that's our tip. We split it with the other clerk. Like that's like, it was like tradition. Right. So, um, but the way it happened, it was so fucked up. It was like, you know, it's my first, uh, thieving rolling of a dead body. I've never stolen uh, money from anybody, especially not, a, certainly not a dead person until then. So, Anyway, so I, I go back in because I think, well, I don't even know this guy's name. I wanted to know his name and something about him. And anyway, so I go in and I get his wallet. It's on the floor and I grab it and I see his name. And then I see he has like $35 in there. And then I take it, put it in my bra, my, my boob wallet, I guess. And I, <laughs> and then I put his, but then I put his wallet back in his pants and then I turn around to leave. But then I think like, I watch a lot of fucking true crime and I go, Oh my God, if this is a murder, you got your fingerprints. They're going to wonder. Yeah. They're going to wonder like, why are my fingerprints on his wallet? So I take his wallet back out. He's still dead sitting in that chair, naked from the waist down, by the way, staring to God. And I am just fucking with his wallet like a maniac. And I'm rubbing it like all over, like rubbing, <laughs> rubbing, trying to get all the fingerprints off. And then I, and then very gingerly, like with my hoodie, you know, 
it's important to get what gotta wear a hoodie all, all times <laughs> anyway and i gingerly put it back in his back pant pocket and then i think holy shit you dumb bitch if this is a murder they're gonna be like why aren't his fingerprints on his own wallet no no oh, they're God not damn it come on no 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 they won't they're not that smart they're not that like unless so he, then you pull the I wallet back now. out he didn't hold he wasn't holding like state secrets you know he's just some bum you don't know like, that <laughs> no listen i i know that now lauren but, but i know you are on to, yeah i mean i know that now but in the moment like the unknown thinking, in a new I'm situation robbing, yeah yes i'm in a new situation i never committed this type of crime before so i was panicking and I didn't know what to do, so I take this man's hand and, and put I it kind on of, the wallet. <laughs> just a little bit to know that, you know, yeah, I put his fingerprints back on his wallet. It'd be funny if like the, morgue, an asshole. the morgue showed up while you're doing that. They just be like, ma'am, uh, <laughs> like, we gotta. Okay, move I'm this. sorry, I'm just I'm robbing him, and I don't want <laughs> to turn around. Listen, the morgue your would goddamn business. the morgue would help you rob him because I told you, like everyone I picked bodies up with stole. So like that they would just be like, ah, oh, she got to it first. Yeah. yeah that's tradition at the OCME yeah. as well. And I, and Get I me for libel. Take his credit cards because I'm not an asshole. Because you're not I stupid. Because like his... they can trace Thank that. Thank you. But also it's just too much. It's also just too much. Like I thought. I wouldn't take a subway card either. You know what I mean? He was one away from a free sandwich, but I didn't want that because I figure I would take maybe the free sandwich. It, it'll mean something to his kids or something. I don't know. I would but take the cash. The I mean, who's gonna? He's not needing yeah. that cash right now. You deserve to find. Yeah, it. he doesn't cash for need. Sure. He doesn't need the sandwich either. Like I would take no, the free. That was true. <laughs> I Look, just thought. Let somebody in the morgue get the sandwich. Okay, I guess sure. All right. All right, let the morgue tech Yeah, the morgue people subway. can have the sandwich. They need it anyway. Don't you yeah. need a lunch break working there? It's true. You do. You get tired. Dead but people. that was my porn clerk body. The por the worst part about it is that I had to then I had to split that $35 with stupid Josh and it was 17.50, 17.50 across the board after change. And I just felt like after having to put his fingerprints back on the wallet, which I know I didn't have to do, but I was just being weird. It's not worth it. Because I was panicking. Not it, worth it. Next time, if that guy doesn't have a hundred or le or more, I'm not it. doing it. Why not can't rich just... people die in the porn store? Why are there not more rich people? Because they have home jacking booths. Like they have they have sex rings. The rich people have sex rings. Right. They don't need they to go to the jerk off book. They literally have children right. and they have organizations. And they have Ghislaine G G G and Maxwell's, so they don't need it. Yes, they have yeah. recruiters who bring people to them. Yeah, they men. Yeah, young kids. Yeah. It's like LinkedIn. They've got they it all sorted want. out. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, I mean, the the organization is really something to be proud of. I mean, it's it's admirable. It's very well organized. It's well Once you've organized. got money, you can have other people all do that those organization. Things. Yeah, we have That's people. Right. We have people. We to have procure. people for that to procure those children. Oh, we well. Speaking of, I just got the scariest fan mail. We read it aloud last episode, but this guy saw our joke about filming abortions to sell on OnlyFans. It was like a joke we were talking mm. about. Like, let's like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, like, what if you could what if fund you your could... abortion by filming your abortion? Right, like, ha, ha, ha. And this guy took it seriously. Yeah. He wrote me, like, a five-page letter about, like, his manifesto as to why late-term abortions turn him on and how he wants to, like, impregnate me and, like, like ha uh, like pregnant, like, what we breed to abort. And then, like, he talk kept talking about, like, our community and like lumping me in with it. Oh, that guy's computer needs to get looked at. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. he needs look, to get like, needs so, to be on a registry or some kind. Oh yeah. And I look I mean then I started snooping online and there are these communities of like breed to abort and it's like a real thing. And I'm like all pro choice but not not like that. Like oh my god. No. So, I fucking I, I did almost like I worked in radio, you know, in Portland, and one time we were having a problem getting callers, and I was all like, hey, caller 10, you can get me pregnant, and caller 9, I'll give you the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and they called. I mean, oh, yeah, phones lit up, but, you know, the legal team did not like that at all. CBS no. was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what? Rich people do it? What's wrong? What's like, wrong? Sex, sex trafficking. What? Yeah, this is like what successful people do. Did you check my taxes before yeah, I came it's on like the show? Bit, it's like Bitcoin. Is Everyone's doing it. What's the problem? <laughs> kid currency. Right. It's kid, kid coin. Kid coin. It's kid coin. It's just kid coin. It's just kid coin. What's wrong? 
Um, any any true crime stories we want to talk about? Time is flying. We got a lot to pack in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, oh my God, look at us. What? But she's got more stories. I know she's amazing. We were talking before we started recording, oh, oh, oh. and you just casually were like, "I, I." There was this one time I was abducted. Possibly. Hey, can we get some creepy music, Frank? Like some something like, vaguely X Files. Something vaguely X Files ish. Like royalty free X Files. Yeah. Come on, Frank. <laughs> get on it. And we love we love Dad. God Frank. damn it, Frank. I love you. We love him. Um, my dad thinks he He's might have great. No, Frank's amazing. Yeah. We love Frank and we love everybody here at Gas Digital. We love everyone at Gas Digital, especially Zach and Miko. We love Zach and Miko. Um uh, my dad thinks he was abducted, and when I was a kid, he will deny this now. Yeah. But when I was a kid, he told me, okay, Lauren, if you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you feel a presence at the edge of your bed, I need you to just stand up right away and tell it to leave. <laughs> That's not what you tell yeah. a scared seven-year-old. And then I read Communion, and I was like outside with a flashlight. Oh, oh. And oh. I, I was outside with a flashlight like, if you're here... I'm ready. You don't need to sneak attack. Just take me. Just take me. Just take me now. I'm ready. I will let you do the genetic hybrid experiments with me. It's fine. I know they travel in families. I do believe there's hybrids walking around. Don't get me started on the regression hypnotherapy of Dr. David Jacobson. I imagine this is like an alien, like coming to Earth, like on a family vacation. And they're just like, well, let's see what Earth is like, kids. No, they, there's an like... agenda. There's a, there's a breeding program. This has been going on. Like aliens are... Like the listing link, like we are alien monkey sex, like we are their experiment. Like they've taken babies from women, and the women will say, like you have no right, and the aliens will telepathically tell them, yes, we do. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we do we're have good a here. right. You're fine with that. This. Fucking terrifies me. Okay, so, Lauren, I want to tell you what I what happened to me because I want someone, I need someone with some knowledge um, to tell me what just kind of explain what the purpose is or oh, if no. it was real or what okay well, yeah, Christine you know I'm not okay. I'm not the oracle but but I definitely have a lot of uh you know like anecdotal knowledge about this because I can't stop watching alien abductee interviews so I have I have an amalgamation yeah. of knowledge but I you know I mean I can't just can't answer it definitively. I fall in right. love with you more and more every time you talk about like aliens. I'm just like, I what? just want to like bask in the glow. What about Ted life. Bundy? I know about that too. Okay, I mean, but there's something different oh, about God, your yeah, energy you're when you're like, hot. let me tell you about aliens. <laughs> it's like a, well, so, it's your child whimsy. It's, it's my about. childhood whimsy. Okay, Christine, what happened? And curiosity too. No, I love that about her too, Adrian. She's just so sex. She lights up a room when she talks about dead people and aliens and murder. It's <laughs> yeah. beautiful. I'll, I'll, I'm available for weddings and children's birthday parties. We have a very special relationship. <laughs> uh, well, I want to tell you. Uh, okay, so this is. There's going to be two parts to the story. There's a part that I thought I I thought for my entire adult life until I was about 35 years old, I thought it was a dream. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I go out to no this part I do know happened. I went out to when I was about eight years old, I go outside to feed my dog trapper. I had a Doberman pincher. My mother called him crapper. My mom wasn't a really nice lady. She was kind of a drunk and kind of a mean drunk sometimes, but this, at this time, I don't remember her drinking. She just, you know, it's kind of a bitch. Um, but I go out and I feed Trapper and his little dog, Pen. And then I come out. And here's where I think the dream started is I come out of the dog pen after I'm done feeding him. And there's this little guy standing in front of me. I'm a kid. He's about my height. And he's talking to me, but he's not moving, moving his, his tiny mouth. mouth. He's telepathic. Not, you know. Yeah. No, it's, it is all happening in my head. That he's checks out. That checks out. He wants me. He wants me to go somewhere, and I was like, "No, I got to get inside. My mom's gonna get mad at me. I, you know, I've got to go inside." And he's like, mm. "And then next thing I know, this and this part's real." Um, my mother got furious with me. In fact, as an adult, I talked to her about this night. She was so scared and pissed off. She said I was gone for two hours. Where the fuck have you been? If Missing I start time. Fucking hitting Missing you right time. Now, We've got two I'm never going to stop. Yeah. And then she just freaks out at me. And I was like, I don't know. I just fed the dog. I don't know. And she yeah. just starts like screaming at me. 
And I remember that she sent me to bed without dinner, you know, because when you, you're a fat, you know, eight year old, you, That's dinner is everything. It was your, that was my whole day. Yeah. So I got sent to bed. And so the next day is when I started thinking, I had that weird dream about this little dude. So fast forward about, you know, uh, 30 years. I'm about 35 years old. So this is eight. I was eight years old when this happened. I talked to my mom about this. She's like, yeah, I remember that night. I went all over the neighborhood. I was screaming for you. You were gone. And I don't know what happened to you. And, you know, you, what, do you, what happened to you? And I said, I don't, I actually don't know, mom. This is really weird. Like I had this dream that there was this little guy out or whatever. And then I saw this thing on TV after my mom and I talked about it. Um, I saw this thing on TV about the Zimbabwe aerial school oh, event. You know, you know about this? This is a so, huge, this so, is one so, of the most, okay, just for listeners, Google it. This yeah. is an incredible UFO sighting. All these children had uh, third, they had contact fourth, you know, fourth, what mm -hmm. yeah they had contact with the aliens they came down there's multiple witnesses it's a almost irrefutable contact story that happened and even there the were te teachers there teachers everybody yep. saw it the aliens were not hiding that day so yeah no yeah. and in Ooh. fact the the kids to this day will, and the teachers to this day maintain that this fucking happened yes Yes. But here's the part that I never told anybody, anybody I would ever talk to about this story. I never told anybody because this is where I thought it was sounded crazy. Was it the guy that I saw was wearing a little black suit? Like he was wearing a jumper, like a, you know, like a work suit. And yeah, I know it sounds like crazy, a one, he had a one, but he was wearing, yeah. he had like a long, long pant. Yeah. Like, 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 like a mechanic. Clothing. Yeah. Wearing, like a mechanic suit. A like boy a mechanic. Suit. Yes. This yes, is exactly common. Like that. Oh my so, God. Three. We got well, so three. What's got weird three. is it? So what's weird about this is that the aerial school kids were asked to write or draw pictures, draw and they drew pictures the of these short things that were exactly like what I saw with those the black fucking suit on. Yeah. And I that's when my heart sank. And then I knew this other guy who was like, "Yeah, you got abducted for sure. No shit, you know." And he was kind of a dick. He was like a customer at the porn store. And he was like, yeah, for sure you got abducted. He goes, you, you probably got a scoop market on your back of your leg. And I go, oh, do you? I kind of do. I have like this, I have a dent in the back of my left leg. I have like a little, um, like any, you fit the tip of your finger in it. Anything you on your neck? You know what I mean? Neck? It's not. Anything in your ear? I, I don't. What do you, I mean, I don't think I have any. They put implants in people's extra, ears a lot. I have like a little extra flesh somewhere, like a little bump in one of my ears but i don't have you know what i mean in this bad. ear i have like a little bump here john lee but i don't know to, john lee was a the doctor that was taking implants out of people for a while i think he died recently but uh you might the scoop mark that might be our number what was that four or five we're at five we're at five ding 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 okay so yes christine like the the suits are common. Like, do you think that was a real thing? Yes, that was a I real think thing. So. Absolutely. Okay. First off, read. Is there any way I could have seen something about the aerial school and then no. put it in my own head? No. Just, like, I mean, like, how would you have seen that? that at eight years? Yeah, old? Yeah, eight years old. You think that you gave yourself your own screen oh. memory? You think that you like you you, well, you fucked your own memory up? Actually, no, because the aerial school thing happened before 19 or after 1978, right? Yeah, it happened in the, in happen the 80s. Before? No, I think it happened in the 80s. 80s. Yeah. So I really I think, think that right. if your memory of the suit on, I think that's your organic memory. And that's not um, just with the aerial school. Many people say that the beings that are smaller uh, are like kind of worker bees for the taller grays and that these smaller ones, they, they're like more blue is what they say, that they often are in like onesie mechanic like outfits like they're like the the little helper guys they're little blue collar guys little blue collar guys and then the grays <laughs> blue collar guys little blue collar yeah, guys yeah you know i need to get your dna yeah. and then you know we're unions so we yeah. gotta like take lunch okay like <laughs> we yeah. this up? we're on the clock, oh, on the clock. Come on. no it is like that people that have uh had regression hypnosis to talk about uh abductions say that it is like they're on the clock and they have jobs and that they've even caught the grays like telepathically arguing with each other about chris was talking about that as well yeah we had an 
skeptic T on the show who was talking about them arguing and like, no, this is my job. No, really? I'm, I'm going and do this now. Well, can you let me do my job right now? Can you now let me do my job? I know how to probe a human. Yeah. Like All right? arguing with each other. And that then there's these other beings that are like praying mantis ones so that are weird. like the ones that are controlling everything. I mean, some people think that the greys are just like worker bees. Some people think that they're just drones. Um, there's people, you know, there's like five different races we've had contact with apparently. And, and the greys are maybe not the good guys, probably not the good guys. Probably not the good guys. Um, but they, you know, yeah, the telepathy checks out, the suit checks out, um, you know, the missing time. You should read a book by Bud Hopkins called Missing Time. It's like the, the best abduction book ever. It's about... Uh, all the scientific, uh, st- like they did a whole study on people that have missing time and that were abducted. So like that, like you said, oh, I think it was just I just fed the dog and I just came in. What? But you've gone been gone for like four hours. You know, that's what yeah, happens. My so people- mom was mad. Yeah. yeah, my mom, when I talked to her about it, because I had to ask her, I was just like, so do you remember this night? that I went to go feed the dog and she goes, Oh my fucking God, I've never been more mad at you. I don't know what the fuck you were doing. What kind of, I'm spitting, what kind of game you're playing with me, but she was just so mad at me. And I was abducted by aliens. Mom, fucking aliens. I told her about that dream and she's like, what? No way. (laughs) She couldn't believe it. But I, but listen, Lauren, let me ask you this. Um, How did they, how did they get here? Like that's okay. what I can't. So the biggest figure the biggest out because we're right. like out okay. here in the universe. So we're on the edge. Have you watched the uh, the David Grush testimony in Congress that happened at the end of July? They actually brought up finally on record interdimensional. They brought it up. So we what we now. That? Well, we interdimensional okay. travel. So we don't think that they're just nuts and bolts going from point A to point B, like, you know, the way that we would think of it, like in a linear line. We think that they're bending yeah. space and time. They're like taking, you know, take a piece they of fabric to. and right. bend it A to B. And also there's something interdimensional happening. It's not just they're a part of multiple like the multiverse. There's there's multiple things going on at once. There's a piece of this, of course, they didn't bring this up in the congressional hearings because I, I'm guaranteeing you that this is a part that they have that's still confidential because it's too scary. A big component of the alien abduction phenomenon is also seeing dead relatives, sometimes on the ships, and people don't like talking about it. There's something about death that this is connected to. There's something about where we go when we die that this is connected to. These are not just beings from another planet. It's something even crazier. There's something interdimensional happening here. It's it's mm. Whitley Strieber talks about this a lot. Other people are talking about it. These uh, incidences of high strangeness where somebody will have missing time and they'll see a dead relative come out of the woods and then they'll have a UFO experience. And the more they talk about the interdimensional stuff, yeah, it's not yeah, non human. No, there's definitely something to that because wasn't it back in like two th- oh God, it was like it was right after they turned on the neutron collider. There was like a group of scientists or something that had proved to some extent that our little energy does in fact go to stasis in like another dimensional kind of bit. Mm, and and you I, have to like complete the circuits. I think I know what you're thing. talking about. I mean, there's a lot of thermodynamics, you know, ener- but, but yeah. just in general, there's something to this that's not just about space. So I think that they are visiting from other planets but i also think that we are confusing planets with dimensions dimensions and i the think the next final frontier and i think that some okay. of them come from within the earth and there's many abductees that say that they actually live in the earth and like there are people that say in the ships that they were going down through the earth and that they were in a cave when they were getting probed and stuff oh yeah like the guy some of the pilots said that they saw the the ships go in the water. Oh, there's oh, it went down. So yeah. much going on in the water and Antarctica. Like, don't get me started on the UFO oh, there's bases. There's a whole like star of Antarctica. Or something in Antarctica. <laughs> there's a whole fucking Nazi star. I won't. I mean, there's you a know. Nazi star. There's a Nazi in Stargate. Antarctica. Okay. okay. All right. And there's okay. another one in Hawaii, and they connect to the one in Alaska. There's anyway. That's a whole episode. That's what a whole episode. episode. But um. I'm yeah. so fascinated. Okay, so that's how they get here. Though, so if they're interdimensional, here's my other question: If they're interdimensional, why? It would seem that they've had a long time to mm-hmm. deal with humans. Why are they still doing it? 
I like, we they yeah they've had access to us for a long time. They've got our dead relatives. Right. What about us? Do they not yet know? I just so, don't get that. I don't either. Why are they still is, fucking with us? These are that the great. These are the great questions, and I think it, the things that we don't understand about what. Um, a soul is and what happens when we die. I think that they have some, they understand these things. And there's something about Mm -hmm. us, about our, you know, our genetics and also like how we contain our energy that they don't have. Like they, they um, refer to their bodies as containers and they have telepathically told numerous abductees, we can switch containers. You can't. It's the same kind of hubbub about angels, you know what I mean? And like, I yeah. guess that's where this is the crossover this is between the cr- religion demons, and aliens is that aliens, all of it's the uh, same. Angels and demons have no soul. They desire our soul. Yeah. So this is, I think it's something deep. There's something crazy and esoteric oh, going on. Interesting. Yeah. It's something about containing life. Like, and they can't yeah. do it in a way that they can't. And there's like some kind of crossover that we don't understand. Maybe it's not about us at all. And it's a little bit self-centered to think that. And maybe they're just <laughs> actually using, like harvesting something from so they us. Can, that it's they the only use. way they can come. Maybe they yeah. honestly, yeah, maybe they're using it to make lube. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're like using really, it yeah. in like, like alien <laughs> pharmaceuticals. We're just literally being like, we're livestock and we're just being like we're harvested. Like, it's we're the river. river. Alien <sighs> Viagra. It's not our soul. It's just so they can come. Like <laughs> We need their life spark so we can get off. We have more in common with them than you know. We're all shallow. <laughs> like We're all shallow meat machines. Right? What if we're just, we're just their cock sock? We're just pocket yeah. pussy for them. That's, That's it. it. Possibly. That's it. The, we are their uh, circumcised penis face serum. Yeah, we're just their liver to jerk off yeah. into. Yeah, that's it. It is the right. I mean, our think of what motivates our technology. It's sex and porn. And food. Why wouldn't it be the same thing for them? Maybe. But uh, the greys don't have and genitals. Food, right. Yeah, but they're a working class. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the if the reptilians are running everything, I'm sure they have great big cocks. So... They still know. need pharmaceuticals of sorts. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe what they... if there's some kind of alien cancer that the human soul cures? Nah. Huh? See, maybe that's something huh? like a medical thing. What about that would make maybe, sense? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Like, for medicine? They've said that, but I also think they lie. Mm. They've been caught. The Greys have lied to people and been caught in lies numerous times. They just lie. How many times have you lied on a customer service job because you just, <laughs> it was above your pay grade, the answer, and you were just like, <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah, if yeah. we have that in stock. Yeah, I, sure. I don't, you can come down. I'll talk to the manager. Honestly, or whatever. that's who you're dealing with. Yeah, they're just like I, they're just trying to get through their day. <laughs> right. It's the fucking mechanic that's Have like, you... I don't know. I could get that part tomorrow. I could get it next week. I don't know. Why are you asking so many questions? Can I just do my job? So this is so annoying to think that even like advanced Why does civilizations, it have to be about you? advanced civilizations, even have to like work for their breaks. We are like, the Karens of the universe. What the fuck, man? Stop asking so many questions. This sucks. It sucks that even like an advanced <laughs> civilization still they're like on the clock. Like fuck. That's not anyway. Yeah. All right. That's our uh, future. That's are, what I think our future is. We're always going to be on the like clock. This. It's never I hate it. Play. I hate it. Our souls are. I just do like the. I do like, like the idea. Plan. I know. I I love the idea though that they can move soul, and they're just trying to figure out why we can't. Yeah, something or like what that. Makes us each like what makes us individuals. Yeah, that's like a that's like a a, a great. Of like science fiction plot, you know, like, and then I was going to destroy all humankind, but then I realized how special you are. It's every angel. God damn it! That's so cliche. I yes, know. Yes, but maybe. I mean, why do they keep exactly. growing uh, fetuses in women and then like taking the babies and making hybrids and like? Then they say there's hybrids walking among us. Like, why are they? I mean, there's something about us that they are maybe, interested in genetically. Maybe that they want. there's yeah. something about baby adrenochrome that's like <sighs> alien. Meth. Don't even go there. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> fucking cutards. Hashtag adrenochrome. Hashtag, Hashtag adrenochrome. cutards. Oh my god. Um, so uh, cutards. I love cute, it. Cutards. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't be so cutarded. <laughs> yeah. Great. Don't be so cute. Yeah. I listen. I did a podcast with Sam Tripoli, and I had to deal with his fan base. Love you, Sam. We love you. But oh, my God, they were COVID deniers when I was working in the morgue and I just couldn't. I couldn't. I was. Yeah, you did tell them, didn't you? You told them like, no, this is real. This is real. Shut up. Um, 
Do we want to, we don't have a ton of time left, but do we want to talk a little bit about the gay cruising cop? Let's talk about the gay cruising cop and the Long Island Yeah, tell coming. me what you know about it. I don't know anything. I'm fascinated okay. with All this right. guy, but I haven't had any time. Here's, to here's the rundown. Yeah. The rundown is that he was possibly killing in Atlantic City and also he had a property in North Carolina and also uh, I think a timeshare in Vegas and there's other murders that all fit the MO. So we're talking possibly like Ted Bundy numbers. Right. There's the Gilgo oh, four. Okay. Yeah. There's the Gilgo four, which was Craigslist prostitutes all uh, dumped in the same location. They were previously frozen, which means that he had access to like a meat locker or something. And he knew that you can't determine cause of death as easily if something's frozen. All Craigslist hookers. That was his thing. He used to call the families from payphones at Port Authority and like threaten their siblings and stuff like I, I'm watching mm-hmm. your, your fucking whore sister rot. Are you like a whore like her? He was terrible. They found his DNA off a pizza crust that he threw out because he had bad taste in pizza and he's really fat. So it's hilarious. And yes. um, it's a big fat guy that got caught with pizza crust. Like he can't write this stuff. And um, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's great. And what else? And uh, they, they've been going. His house has a soundproof uh, compartment in the basement and he was an architect and um, he was he was annoying and he used to talk to people at work all the time about the the Long Island serial killer and what do you think? And he's just, you know, one of those. Um, oh, like God. So he's a thing. narcissist, too. Oh, oh totally, you, And the totally. first thing he was like, is this on the news? And he has a lisp. Are so talking about it? He's Re- Rex Hummerman. And uh, how annoyed do you think he was that he couldn't talk about his like architectural brilliance of his quiet rooms? I know, right? Of course. Oh. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. So I can't wait for him to be like, and the uh, room was like this. Yeah. yeah. And I designed it because yeah. this. And um, just yeah. as soon as an FBI profiler wants to talk to him, he's going to get his dick out. <sighs> So oh yeah, he's mm-hmm. that he's that type. Mm-hmm. We want to write to him, of course. We want to see if he writes back. But the thing is that there may have been other people involved because the long the area that he's from is like very cop heavy, and they dissuaded the FBI from helping them for a number of of years actually because the feeling was that they were protecting an ex cop because there were a lot of sex parties in that area, a lot of cops involved in prostitution sex parties, and so we think that. There also may be another killer that had a, a different MO that may have been a, a cop or someone associated with the cops. So what do we got, Adrian? Give me uh, the rundown. Well, apparently yeah. Officer Burke was uh, busted last week for allegedly offering oral sex to an undercover male park ranger at the Vietnam Veterans uh, Memorial Park in Farmingville. That shouldn't an be area a crime. Also known for gay cruising. That's just a that's just a park. It's a gay yeah. cruising park. It's just a park. In New York, that's just a park. Right. <laughs> that's like, like every... why do you have undercover cops? That's just over... a park. Why? People cruise in parks, gay and straight. And like, how are you just going to turn him in like that? You should just feel happy you got picked. So how is Rex connected? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, okay, so there's speculation that they may have met while gay cruising. And so... Like he may have saw him, seen him like staking out somebody, or like you know, like being predatory. Like I think they were stalking. like cruising the parks together, that, or like cruising the same parks, or like something oh, like that. So like Rex was looking for women and ran he, into and each other. Ran into each yeah. other. Oh, hey looking, buddy, you getting like, any bites I see today? You. Nah, it's dead in yeah. the water out here. Ah, uh, oh, you're you're not you're not doing what I'm doing, right? Are you, oh you're no, doing no, 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 dude, no. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Think of that as like a comedy sketch. Like the one guy's like. No, no, I'm I'm looking for you know gay guys, and the other one's looking for women to kill, but they don't tell each other what the other one's doing, so yeah. they assume he's like, "Are you also looking for women to kill?" But yeah. they don't say it. You're also looking for gay yeah. guys. <laughs> it's like back and forth. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a who's on first until I yeah. figure it out. Neither yeah, that's, one of them are on the same team. That's yeah. so funny. Somebody has to write that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of loose right now. They're kind of just going on like a word of mouth, like you know, like that. But there is. That's okay. a scene in my serial killer cartoon. Um, whenever that gets, whenever I get the money for the for the pitch. So there is, uh, it came only after a month after Daily Mail excludedly. Okay, so Burke fumbled the case. Okay, well, big um, surprise. Long Island the investigation cop. into uh, the Google ah. Beach murders <laughs> and led a double life that allegedly he was 
smoking crack, cross-dressing, <laughs> and having relationships with prostitutes instead of trying to catch the Long Island serial killer. I think he, they were cruisy buddies. He needs to hang out with Biden's son. That would mm-hmm. be like the buddy yeah, movie like I want to watch. Like. That sounds so <laughs> fun. Like have something a lot in common. In common. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's his name again? Yeah, that's adorable. Hunter. I, Hunter and, and Burke should just like have a fucking buddy comedy. Mm-hmm. I encourage anybody to smoke crack and pay sex workers. That sounds good. put on a dress every now and again. Who you gives know, a cross shit? Dress. Why not? None of these things yeah, are, should let be your balls crimes. out. These are not crimes. Okay. No, <laughs> this, I agree with you. These are just recreation. So, okay. Yeah, it's, stuff to, it's something to do on a Saturday night or yeah, Tuesday, whatever you want. It's what capitalism mm-hmm. does to people. So what this could do is like make bring the 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 serial miller serial <laughs> miller. <laughs> oh the my f- god, the whore mill. Um <clears throat> brain, come on. Let's go. Come on. Woo! You got it. Uh we're going to go from serial killer to like also conspiracy. Like, right? Because now we're talking like he was in cahoots. Maybe. With a gay cruising cop. Maybe. Who was protecting his double life. Yeah. Oh, Everybody yeah. kept it hush-hush. I still think the wife was in on it because how do you not know about a little... Well, I think there's a lot of... proofy Denial is, is very strong. I mean, John Wayne Gacy's True. wife didn't know, you know. They always say if your husband mm-hmm. has a room you're not allowed to go in, he's a serial killer. Hmm. So you should be allowed in every room in your house. Facts. <laughs> That's what they say. Facts. <laughs> yeah. That's, so yeah, we got some bona fide truth right there. That, that's yeah. a common element in most of these. Anytime there's been someone with a wife, there was always like a basement or a room they were not allowed in. So, you know, just yeah, just don't go in yeah. there. Yeah, just please don't go in Honey, there. That's, why is this door locked all the time? <laughs> that's that's don't my man it. cave. You should be in loud in the man cave once. Yes. In you a while. guys are talking about something like I. My son is 33. Christopher, he lives up in. Um, he lives in, above, above my garage, and my boyfriend is a guy named Gary Lucy. He's a fancy. He's a writer. He's so great. I love him so much. But we just went on like a, a date that lasted eleven days, and then he went. He went. He was living in Portland. He went back to Portland, packed all of his shit, and just moved in. Like Aww. just like that. Pussy's like we good. Was being second dated it. <laughs> yeah, it was so great, and so so. Christopher, my older son, he was like, wait a minute. So that guy's just moving in with us now? Like, Christopher doesn't really live with me, but kind of, you know, he lives upstairs. So he's like, he's just moving in with us. And I go, yes, he's very nice. And if he brings a refrigerator that he's all like, do not touch that. (laughs) We are not touching that fridge. I don't give a shit. He's that nice. If he has a room he doesn't want us to go in, if he says, don't go in the basement, don't open that refrigerator, we're not doing it. You know, Don't you fuck this, fuck up, this up for me. Some serial killers have a very nice double life, and they did treat their family yeah. well. Like, BTK treated his daughter wonderfully. So, I mean, it's possible, and I love she's that still, for you. She just saw her dad. She just saw yeah. her dad. She's excited. Recently. Yeah. yeah. I, I love this for you, Christine. I love for you to get the Thank good you. side of a serial killer. Because, yeah, it's I important. Hope so. <laughs> I'm not I'm never afraid of him so I don't give a shit it's fine yeah and if he kills it's not going to be like anyone like you it's going to be a completely different type you know it'll be a completely different type and you know what's funny is that I just I just told him that we I had this conversation with Christopher and I said um you know so I I guess what I'm saying is that it you know if you do kill somebody um I'm going to be in total denial about it so I, you know my friends will be like but Christine, they How found his DNA, know? and I'll be like, "Well, but hey, he was just jerking off at this crime scene. Like that doesn't mean that he did it. It just means that he came when he saw her. Yeah, he just yeah, hey, he time. like crime scenes make him horny. Did you see that body? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna shot yeah, a little too. Hot, hot, hot. Oh <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> oh my god. It's um, it's porn like, thirty. Yeah. It's porn thirty. It's time for 30, we have a we have a porn clip. What did you pick this? The, what did you pick? Look, this has been such a wonderful conversation. I don't even know if I remember at this point. There is a perverse family in there. Oh no, uh, Ugh, there the, is actually bother, perverse family. Actually bothers me. There's a demon one that seemed like it had a decent amount of plot, and uh, I don't know some other one. Plot, Frank. What would you like, my dear? Demon plot. You've been so quiet this whole episode. Yeah, what I the love fuck, you. Frank? There's two demon ones. I'm just trying to figure out which one. 
We're gonna. Which one has the one worst? This horror story of a demon probably has a story to it. Probably. Oh, probably. Are you okay, wow. Frank? Yeah, you I'm good. Doing good. All He's right. He's just good. having a great chill so time. So quiet. Today. <laughs> just give me a minute. There's an ad. Okay. Uh, while the ad is rolling, Protection Avenue for your protection needs. You can. Fuck so you're gonna grab your little uh, cubaton. Yeah, you're gonna get your cubaton. You can break a window out with this, Christine. Yeah, it's not. You for... can escape the kidnapper van with this. It's not for anal. Oh, I want it's not one for of those. anal. It's for. Um, you also can get your. Who says? Yeah, uh, exactly. I know. Pointy, pointy. I see. Alarm. <laughs> Which could save your life because people will not come if you yell rape, rape, but they will come to stop an annoying alarm. You can get your key knife. It is quite mm-hmm. sharp in case you got to get it in the knuckles, do a little stab stab, or you just need to open your Amazon package on the way in. Either way, uh, you got your it. little pom-pom to make it easier to find in your bag. So you can head on over, everybody, it. to uh, protectionavenue.com. Protection Use our code at checkout, Alien, Alien Murder, Murder Sex 666, 666, for an extra 10% off. It's my besties company. I'm so proud of her. It's, it's fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah that's neat. Yeah. I want to make an alarm that says fire, fire. This is not my dad. Because you're <laughs> right. It won't come when you say rape. <laughs> or like, but if uh, you say fire, fire, this is not my dad. Or king of the hill. Like, that's my purse. I don't I know, don't know you. you. I don't know you. <laughs> you're not my right. dad. I don't know you. You're not my real dad. Not my real dad. They will come running. You good, Frank? Okay. All right. Can you see it, Christine? Here we are. Yeah, I can see it. I, Stumbling I, oh, into oh, the woods. We have so actually long. good production value. Okay. We have yeah. a rugged gentleman who's. This is just he's like dirty dirt already. Snailed. This oh, is just so Portland. Dirty. This is just like right outside of downtown Portland. This is just tent city. Yeah. Yeah, he's just he's just roughing it. He oh, just didn't want to pay rent. Oh, he's animals. making a pocket pussy right there. Oh, he is. He's making a wilderness pocket <laughs> yeah, pussy. Yeah, that's How awesome. resourceful. Well, I'm, I I applaud it. You know, it's recycling. It's use good for every the environment. Piece. It's Native American. <laughs> you got to use yeah. all the parts of the animal. Like, yeah. what you going to do with that neck? Fuck it. Ma- oh, no. Did I hear something out did in the did woods? Did he smell somebody? Oh. He can get smelt by another Portlander. A female. <laughs> oh, what an adorable little log cabin we've transitioned to. Fuck? With a he is beautiful. oh with no, some girls. ladies, girls. Why are they in the, like they're cheerleading? I, I just wanted to show. Oh, so stupid! Look at my daisy. Dudes. Look at my fucking stomach. Like... We got our hair curl to come out to the oh. woods. Wait, this is where's the demon? Where's the demon, Adrian? It's coming. It's in her like, pussy. Is this just homeless rape? Oh, like, let's let's I've, like watch I've, a movie together. I've experienced homeless rape. Like, give me some paranormal. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there was a dick in that popcorn. Fucking, I don't know. Not the T-shirt. Okay. God. <laughs> Look at those perky boobs. Do you, so are, perky. Free you them. Do we have it? Do we have and, any? Do we, oh wait, my oh God. No. Oh, you're not. Oh, so yeah. scary. And we need to. Oh. Oh, Wait, clutch take my off, pearls. Take off your fucking shirts now. Oh, we should probably yeah. get naked and hold each other for comfort. Yeah. <laughs> take off your <laughs> shirt. Will you grab my pussy? Yeah, will you grab my pussy? <laughs> Make me feel better. <laughs> um, Frank, fast forward. I'm bored. Please. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> I want to hear the story they're telling each other. Oh, oh no. Oh, we got <laughs> naked drifter dude outside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fantasy. If you guys, how did you guys know? <laughs> Somehow, I just know. I just, I just know. knew that you were into like co-ed lesbian thunderstorm. Yeah, you making get out that Portland flannel off. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's that not lint. how you eat a pussy. You don't lick it like ice cream. It's not a fucking. Ew, like, ugh, yeah. Ugh. You know, that, you know that that would make me kick her in the head. I'll yeah, be I'd be like that don't tickles. Do, don't tease me. Pop in the face. Yeah. Shout out on her Hello. taking care of her blowout, though. <laughs> like, her hair. homegirl was holding her curls. She's like, my stylist worked hard on these. Yeah. Let me make sure true. this lasts. Oh, oh, oh creepy, oh, dirty dick. God. Oh, he, is he a demon? He might be a demon. I thought he was just on meth. I thought he was just demon homeless. Where did that red light come from? Yeah, he's a demon. It came from hell. And she's like, I'm not even scared. That's just amazing. Really? Creepy footage. <laughs> well... 
she's just into it. She's like, well, it's not every day that you have like a hey. random homeless cock come up. It's like, Do you, always play with your what the <laughs> you fuck? haven't been married to a oh, magician. Oh, they know each other. <laughs> ah, I remember that guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why I love homeless uh, pornos because, you know, they can pay a lot of attention to you. Oh, so they she, killed her. Oh, she wow. killed her. Oh, he I could, could smell, smell your you. cunt. Oh, okay. Silence of the Lambs rip off. <sighs> Can we just yeah. get to some penetration? Like, what the fuck? Oh, she is a demon. Oh, oh gotta... she's the oh, demon. Yay. It's like Jennifer's yeah. body. Oh, well, he picked yeah, the wrong. Yeah, I get it now. Okay. Yeah, yeah go fuck a bitch. demon. Oh, oh fuck your... that demon. Yeah, get that oh, filthy man. mouth on that pussy. Oh, he can. He's better at it than she was. I think. Well, he's probably well, done it before. <laughs> This might have been like the that fifth That was her take. first day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we got penetration oh. at last. Yay. Is he a lot Am cleaner I? now? Did I he take a shower before yeah. he dicked her he down? He definitely shaved somehow. He had an electric <laughs> razor out there with all that roadkill. But why he washed she... it off in the rain. Yeah. But she has to touch her. I hate it when girls have to stimulate their clit while they're getting penetrated. Like, if it's so good, you wouldn't have to do that. That's yeah, just he was me. doing it right. It'll this work is out. my opinion. But yeah. I feel All right. No she's not this. being very demonic now, though. Yeah. Like, can you eat his no. soul? She's just being a total demon sub. Yeah. I really want to watch her, like, absorb him, like, in that um, Neil Gaiman show, whatever, you know? Oh. The gods one. <laughs> American yeah, yeah, gods. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is yeah, obviously just rolling around. Yeah, no. Oh, it's, oh, is it's, it in the butt? That was quick. It's red light ah! cabin sex, and that's the fucking preview. God damn it, man! You guys think so much. I haven't gotten to watch a porno in so many years. <laughs> I've oh, it's been so long. Like I haven't seen porn, and like I tried to find porn a couple weeks ago. I swear to God, and I was just. Like typing in like pee pee boobies. I didn't know what to even look for, where to go. I couldn't figure it out. I ended oh. up with a bunch of diagrams and shit. It was what? just weird. Porn We're, tube. I didn't know how to find Dude, porn. By the I time <laughs> I like find the porn for every episode, I've gone like down so many little rabbit holes using search words that I'm just like, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Am that's... I bringing that? Nope. Maybe. <laughs> all I th- I don't know if I've got my net nanny or safe search on, but I swear to God, all I could find was just diagrams and medical safe stuff. Search. And I'm like, I don't know why I couldn't find it. But I, I mean, I didn't know about, what did you say, Lauren? Is porn, porn something? Porn tube. Porn tube. Okay. Wait, well, isn't it? I, I swear to God. I Yeah, porn tube. You can do porn tube. You can do uh, X hamster. X hamster. Red tube. <laughs> it's just called X. There hamster. are so many. Just Google free porn. Free porn. Red tube. X. It didn't even occur to me to do that. Consult. <laughs> I, I didn't even occur to me to Google free porn. I just consult I thought, the good I lord put, Google. <laughs> I just put in like boobies or something. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Just words random, <laughs> and then something because everybody says it's so easy. So I thought, oh, if I just put in humping, like people would, you know, like it would just show people humping. So, so let me I, ask you'd be you: surprised. This. It shows a lot of other stuff humping. Because you worked in in uh, the, porn the porn store, so would you consider yourself analog in the porn industry? Like, are you? Is yeah. that your your comfortable place to find porn? Like, if you walk into a store, and can you be like? There's a body over there, but there's some good porn over here. Yes. Yes, exactly. Oh, my good. Oh, God. Candida Royale. Ooh. Oh, this one, you know, J- Jenna Jameson did this in her later years. It's not as good as her earlier stuff. But, oh, yeah. No, I I know all about you know, Christy Canyon. And, like, I, I have a documentary in my house I just found. Because my boyfriend, you know, I would told you he moved in. And he was going through one of my like hidey holes and he found this movie called Wad. And I was like, he, he goes, what is this? Is I go, it's a documentary about John Holmes. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have documentaries about porn and they're all tapes. Like I've got all these videotapes and I've got some DVD, but nothing yeah, hits analog. like VHS porn. I mean, yeah, and having to rewind. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, God. 
or you like start it up in the cat. middle of something and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know why the pizza guy has his dick in her now. Oh, already. I can't imagine. Yeah, exactly. Adrian. I don't know. I, oh, oh, I didn't rewind so it. Funny. I'm a digital. I mean, <laughs> how does this story go? <laughs> yeah. What happens? I don't know. It's like in the Big Lebowski. He fixes it. the cable, I guess. I don't know. He fixes the cable. <laughs> yeah. He fixes All the right. cable. Yeah. Uh, would that's you like it. to plug yeah, anything? That's funny. I am analog. Oh yeah, um, just just the fa- the Found Dead podcast. If you think that um, our stories, my and Lauren's and stuff, and we're about dead people are entertaining, these stories that I have recorded are graphic and um, pretty gross. A lot of them, but also um, really human. I mean, there's something really, really human about dying. And I don't think we talk about it enough. And my goal for this podcast was just kind of to normalize death a little bit for us and kind of like uh, bring it home and help people realize like, uh, we're all going to die. We're you all know, going there. It is, it is absolutely going to happen. Because I tried for a long time, even I'm 53 now. So the older I get, the more aware I am that this is definitely going to happen to me. And I got cancer last year. And so that sort of like lit a bomb under my butt about getting familiar with death and getting kind of comfortable with it. And I think that we all should. It's sad that we don't have enough um, relationship with it. We don't talk about it enough. Fuck cancer. Ah, uh, yes. That's a great. Yes. Fuck cancer. And we're and it's it's asshole. so glad that you're oh, still God. with us, Christine. Like, I thought you were going to die. Thank you, Me too. I really. I know. Me too. I thought I was going to die with COVID because I was, I weighed so much. I was like over 300 pounds. And then I lost 116 pounds when I got cancer. So <laughs> you're like, yay! <laughs> yay! Sample yay! sizes. <laughs> yay! Yeah. No. And then I got to look at my wrinkled face now, babe, because I used to have my face was like so bl- bloated. And you know, I had so much fat and it was so cute, cheruby. <laughs> and now. No, you're so I'm beautiful. a wrinkled lady. No. You're sweet to say that. You're a lady are. of much expression. I love yeah. you. And experience. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. And I, both I, things I would, are true. I love you. Thank you both. I'd love to come out to Tucson at some point. Are you Tucson. still in Tucson? Oh, yeah. You? Yeah. yeah. You got a pool? Well, I, I'm in Bisbee, actually. No. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I'm in Bisbee about five miles from the Mexican border. But uh, Tucson is just 90 minutes up the road. And it's a great town, too. We'll have fun. Yeah. Come out. Yeah. Mwah. we'll do love some you. shows it'll be fun fuck yeah i fuck love you too yeah. like the old days at the lauren petrie on all the things everywhere i have a 15 minutes a new 15 well it's not all new but it's like you know you're gonna hear jokes to yeah you're gonna hear jokes on there that are like redone that maybe you heard the beginnings of years ago that are like fixed really oh i love yeah. that i so love that yeah, yeah. Okay. it's on youtube it's live at st vite lauren petrie live at st vitus Everybody go watch it, please. And um, yeah. Yeah. And I uh, have been and will continue to be Adrian Cuss, K-U-S-S. You can find that on that there Facebook or you can check out Give Your Hair a Kiss on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Or if you happen to find yourself in the area, you can book a hair appointment with me. That's right. I also do hair. Like I cut people for a living. Like that is what I do. And I psychoanalyze people all fucking day. All day. And I love every fucking one of them. And you can book an appointment and I can love you too. And I can cut you. (laughs) Uh, Give your hair a kiss dot com. Um, Also check out my band Bedpan Fight. Uh, We will be at uh, uh, Coney Island Brewery September. It's the last Friday of September. So I think that's the 28th. Yeah. I want to say it's the 28th. Uh, from 5 to 7, we are going to be their, um, their little <laughs> bedpan fight house band. It's going to be fucking great. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, and that's I wish... great. Congratulations. That's fun. Oh, thank you. Yay. It's going to be a good time. I wish I could be there. I wish you would be here too. Um, oh, yeah. yeah we... I miss New York. I haven't been out in a long time. It's a, it's a hellhole. To be honest, it's a fucking. It, it is it's a, an, it's a gross house. It's an overpriced, rat infested, homeless nightmare. That's what it is. Yeah, it's fucking yeah, Mad Max out there's here. There's something about it. Like I still love it though. Like there's, I love that you I'm can get leave. food at any time of night. It's just like it's so neat. It's it, an interesting city. It is fucked up. <laughs> it's yeah. fucked up, but I mean, it's fucked up on so many layers, and the layers intertwine I mean, so uniquely yeah. that you can't witness the beautiful snowflake of fuckery that is 
New York, the, anywhere else in the world. The best part about it, there are like the, the positive interactions you'll have with people where there's just that understanding and transit where, you're, you know, like you yes. bump into somewhere and you both look at each other and go, yeah, well, that motherfucker walk faster. What the fuck? And you like walk. You have the same comp- complaining yeah. together is like what holds everyone in yes Yes. it's that shared misery that is very uniting i I, listen i worked at the porn store for 14 years for a reason it's not because i loved porn it's because of the people that i worked with it was that shared misery and the camaraderie that i enjoyed and that is really almost exactly the same feeling i get in new york city believe me everybody in bisbee is happy there's no reason for me to leave the house in bisbee oh new york is like one big porn store yeah, but basically. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's right. a total shit show and I love it. We love you. Oh, uh, we love you. I love you guys. Thank you so much thing. for having me. Wait, what is the one more uh, thing? Okay. Star Bar on the 20th, uh, the Tromedy Hour show. We're now at the Star Bar at uh, 7, 8 p.m. with Bronson Jones headlining. Yeah. So me. be there, oh, be Bronson. there, be That's there. Great. It's uh, hey. me, me, Jonas ah. Critchfield, Nat Townsend, and Bronson Jones. It'll be great. Yeah, at the Lauren Petrie. That's awesome. At Alien Murder Sex. Fucking follow us, subscribe, leave share, a comment, share, hate just us, share, write us creepy emails, write us more creepy emails. We don't care. Hit the share button. Hit the just share, share button. It. Just share it. Share it with everybody. Just do it. Share it like herpes. Yeah, like herpes. We love everybody. Thank we you are your communist like podcast. Share. We, oh. It is your. It is our podcast. Share. All right. Good night. And we love you. And you're amazing. Bye. I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. Okay.